There's something remarkable about the birds. They don't sow, they don't spin, they don't toil. They don't do much of anything, they just go around and enjoy life. No, we can't do that, you know, we have responsibilities, clearly. But there's something remarkable about that freedom. And one of the saddest things, you know what, I don't like to go to zoos. I don't like the zoo. And I had not quite figured out why I didn't like the zoo until one day, thinking about this whole area of human development and of life, I came to realize that the zoo represented freedom captive. Did you hear what I just said? Oh, when I see the lion, it's nice to get close. But my heart breaks for the mighty beast that needs to be roaming the way it was created. I have spent a lot of time working with corporate America, corporate Europe, corporate Caribbean, corporate stuff. And I'm not a corporate guy. I'm an island boy. I don't like to dress up in suits a lot. I like shorts and sandals. Barefoot's good. And then in the last five years or so, I have shifted my focus, although I still have a lot of clients where I help them to gain market share and sales and profitability, I have shifted my focus away from the money in the company to the people in the company. And as I have begun to learn and to put into practice some things that my dear old grandmother taught me and life has beaten into me, I have come to enjoy and be depressed sometimes by it. I have learned some things that have been very liberating and some things that are very sad. And one of the saddest things that I've learned when I start focusing on people, one of the saddest things was that most people are very unhappy. Lots of human beings are existing on the edge of desperation. I didn't know that. You'd be amazed in this gathering how many people have already contemplated suicide. You might be amazed at the few who have already tried it. Because we were not born to be caged. And when we are caged, we want to die. Am I telling the truth to anybody? <laughs> we were not born to be caged. We were born to set the pace and determine what tomorrow is going to look like. How many of you have a dream? I see hands. Ah, this is good. I was hoping that everybody would say, yes, I have a dream. How many of you would say that there are dreams that are not yet fulfilled in your life? You can't go away yet because you've got a lot more to go. I'm glad everybody said yes to that. How many of you would say that the thing that you most fervently desire of the caliber of aspiration, dream, ambition, yearning, deep, deep, deep hunger and passion is very difficult to come by? Anybody? Now think about this. Your dream, ma'am. Is it something that you can just put on your calendar for Thursday morning and just go pick it up? Think about it, sir. The thing that you really want, can you just build a little plan, a little business plan, and then just travel 100 miles across the country and just go get it? Is that how dreams work? I'll tell you something that's different between you and me and the birds. The birds have freedom, they operate with abandon. They have instincts to go and come as they please. And we too were born to fly, anybody? But the, yes, the difference between the birds born to fly and you, ma'am, born to fly, is that the bird is just operating by instinct. Nature hands it to the bird, to the caterpillar. You have free will. Now, free will is a funny thing because free sounds without, sounds like something without restraint, and yet freedom comes with a price. And one of the prices you, is you must decide to fly, or in the dirt you'll die. And let me make sure that this is clear for all of us here. I don't believe we were born to crawl on the ground. We started crawling. And then we had to stand up and walk. And then after a while we learned how to run. And then after a while we learned how to jump. And then we learned to fly. But you do not get to flight until you recognize that you were born for it. Decide to do it because you have free will. And then go.